Hello, hello, and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Uh, today on this video, um, earlier today I was led over into the book of Psalm, Psalm 110. So on the video today, we're going to do a Captain's Voice series entitled, uh, There's No Respect of Persons with God. Okay, No matter what position you hold in the earth, or even in the heavens that he's assigned you with. Uh, he does not have any respect, especially for those positions in the earth, when it pertains to his will, when it pertains to um, his way and what he wants to accomplish in the earth. He has no respect of persons. He takes into consideration um, not the position of the person, of the individual, basically, okay? So as we take a look at that, in reference to that uh, particular revelation, I was led over into the book of Psalms, Psalm 110, and this is a psalm written by David. And he says, the Lord said unto me, unto my Lord, uh, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So this is what the Lord said unto Christ Jesus, okay? He said this to David also because he said, uh, that was said first uh, in the Old Testament. And he says, The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. So be the ruler in the midst of thine enemies. This is Christ Jesus he's referring to because who is the ruler in the midst of the enemies? He is. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. And the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. For the Lord has sworn, and um, well, he will not repent. He says, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, and that is, and was, and is Christ Jesus. And he says, because Christ became the ultimate priest, the last high priest, after the order of the Old Testament of Melchizedek from the Levitical priesthood. So then he says, uh, The Lord at thy right hand, shall strike through kings in the day of his strength. And that is the actual verse of this revelation entitled, The Lord Has No Respect of Persons, because we see here he tells us that the Lord at, the right, at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Now that is, of course, if there's a king that is not walking and doing according to what uh, God says, or if that king becomes an enemy, to the kingdom of God, okay? It's not that he just goes out and picks upon a king uh, just to pick upon him. No, that's not what it's pertaining to. He's saying that in the day of his wrath and the day that his judgment goes forward and there is must be justice for his kingdom, if there is a king that has done his kingdom wrong, then uh, he's saying that he will strike through kings in the day of his wrath. They will definitely be uh, touched by his wrath also. So he says, he shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. And he shall wound the heads over many countries. And he shall drink of the brook in the way. And therefore shall he lift up the head of those that have been uh, oppressed and trampled under in his kingdom. Okay, so here we see uh, in that particular verse, verse 5, uh, David explains to us that even in the day of God's wrath, no one is oblivious to it if they are an enemy to the kingdom. Because as the word of God tells us, the Heavenly Father decrees and declares out of his word that his wrath is stored up. He stores it uh, up for his enemies, those that uh, come up against the kingdom and his will for the saints of God in the earth. So the first book I'm led over into to actually uh, go into this revelation a little more deeper is going to be the book of Romans. And it's chapter 2, where we're going to start with verses 1 through 11, and that's Romans chapter 2. And uh, starting with verse 1. Now, this is Paul speaking to the Romans, those Romans that had been converted into the kingdom. 
And in chapter one, he just explained to them uh, the significance of uh, walking in, in the will of God and not being uh, out of the will of God and how the wrath of God uh, is revealed from heaven upon those that walk ungodly, okay, those that who know the truth, but then they suppress the truth, they deny the truth, they walk and do whatever they want to do, and oblivious to what they already know from the Word of God. But we start with verses uh, 1 in chapter 2 of this particular book, Romans. He says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, and whosoever art thou that is judges, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemns thyself. For thou that judges does the same things. Okay? So he's saying that those that do judge and they're doing the same things. He said, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemns thyself. Okay? Because you do the same thing and the same judgment because you're placing that judgment upon an individual. That judgment is also uh, for yourself. And I think I've said this on one of the other videos, how the anointing, whenever an individual is walking in prophetic ministry, how the anointing, the prophetic uh, ministry, uh, an individual has been sent out into the earth to walk in the prophetic ministry and how that ministry, whenever an individual begins to judge that individual, they're condemning themselves. They're basically judging themselves, okay, by judging that prophetic ministry individual, okay? And this particular verse tells and uh, explains that to that particular statement that I said. Because he tells us here, he says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever you may be, that, that, you know, that judges. For wherein thou judges another, thou condemns thyself. Okay? That same judgment that you're judging that individual with that's walking in that prophetic ministry. You, let's say you judge them and you call them a liar. Well, that's because you're a liar, okay? <laughs> because, and that's God's way of, that's what, you know, that's what he established in the earth. That is what he has already ordained. And everything that he has ordained and established in the earth will come to pass, and it is coming to pass continually. And he says that thou condemns thyself, for thou that judges do, you know, you're doing the same thing. And so, and basically... I do believe that that is the reason for the judgment coming out of that individual's own mouth because they are being judged by God, and, and that's how God is using uh, the anointing to judge them, okay? So then going on, verse 2, he says, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkst thou this, O man that judges them, which do such things and does the same, that thou should escape the judgment of God? No. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. You know, God's grace and mercy, his goodness, the fact that he does forgive us for doing so many things that we've done that is not pleasing in his sight, that is what draws us and pulls us in closer to him because there's no one on the face of the earth that can love you like God loves you. Okay. Now, he can use people to, you know, of course, manifest his love to you through those different, you know, people. That can be done, but it still will not meet the standards of the love that God has for his uh, creation and mankind. So we go on. He says, verse 4, For despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance, to such sorrow in your heart, knowing that you've done uh, not done right by God. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and, re and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patience, continuous, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So he's saying to those who by patience, continues in well-doing seeking for glory okay and honor and immortality those will enter into eternal life of course that's life eternal is through christ jesus you know when you live forever you become a celestial being you're part of the angelical uh 
uh, kingdom of God, okay? But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. He said, those that do that, there will be indignation and wrath for those that do that. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil, and starting with the Jew first and also the Gentile. But in opposition, he says, glory and honor will be and peace to those, every man that works good, you know, that's doing good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. And see, there's our verse again of revelation that we are talking about today. So it works uh, throughout the word of God. We see that it works in, you know, of course, your behavior, if you're doing good or if you're doing bad. But then he then he tells us here in verses uh, ten to the Jew first and to also in verse nine to the Jew first and also unto the Gentiles, okay, that those things will be distributed among them first, okay, because they have had the uh, Jews have had the actual their ancestors have had the actual uh, they've had the actual uh, appearance of Christ Jesus with them in the earth their ancestors did and they could have told each generation from you know from the generation that was around Christ Jesus when he did walk the earth they could have transferred that information down from generation to generation and nevertheless if they did not then it become a, it became it, you know becomes a problem to the people and so therefore he's saying to the Jew first okay will that distribution of good or bad be displayed okay so now another scripture that i'm led to in reference to uh this revelation regarding god says he is no respecter of persons so the next book i'm led over to is ephesians well no first let's go to acts since we're right here let's go to acts chapter 22 Acts chapter 22, and then, um, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 10, verse 22. Acts chapter 10 and verse 22, where he begins to talk with Cornelius, and um, actually starting at the beginning, beginning of chapter 10, he's talking to an individual named Cornelius, and explaining to him the same process and how there's no respecter of persons. And he then goes on in verse 38. And he specifically states that. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for uh, God was with him. And we are, uh oh, let me get back up to the verse. Of course, we are witness of all the things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Okay, because see how in the land of the Jews, they had an opportunity to see Christ in the flesh there presented before them. Okay, and getting back on point with the story, uh, with the revelation regarding God saying he is no respecter of persons. Um, verse 34, that's the verse we want, okay? So it's verse 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, okay? And uh, this was after the story or uh, with Cornelius, and they had a question regarding the cleansing of mankind and what cleanses man and how a man becomes clean and how it's not about the washing of the hands or certain things uh, or things that you eat as far as being cleansed, but it's all about the Holy Spirit and the purity of the heart. So after explaining that, then uh, Peter says that he perceived that God uh, is no respecter of persons. Okay. So that's another example where he actually states that in the word of God. And then another 
example we're going to look at is in Ephesians chapter 6 and these are all New Testament books Ephesians chapter 6 and starting at verse 1 where he says children obey your parents and the Lord for it's right honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and thou mayest live long on the earth and fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, and not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God for, from your heart. So for with God will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. That's just like if you're going to work, that's where... God prefers you to do the work that you're doing wherever you're at, whatever company you're working for. As you do it, you do it like you're doing it unto God. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Uh, because, and you masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your masters also is in heaven, and neither is there respect of persons with him. Okay? Again, we see that statement being made again. In reference to God showing no respect of persons with him what what he says and what he does grow uh, goes across the border as far as his rules his ways his judgments his wrath and uh, everything that pertains to coming out of his mouth his declarations all that he says it pertains to all so now another scripture and this is just to go over how the wrath of God can be kindled up against an individual. And, and actually, I'm just going to give you uh, Isaiah chapter 63, because I do believe we did a video entitled The Vexing of the Holy Spirit. And this is one uh, in incident where we can actually read a story in the Word of God, the Old Testament book, chapter 63, verse 1 through 10, where we can see where there was... Uh, an individual that was vexing the Holy Spirit, okay? And it caused God to have or to display his wrath upon that particular individual. And who can stand the day of God's wrath and his indignation? No one. And we can see that referenced in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 16. So this video was just in reference to a revelation regarding God. Uh, giving us instruction that there's no respecter with him in positions individuals hold in the earth. Um, he is above every under individual in the earth. He is above every position in the earth. He gives and places those some in certain positions, not all, because some people are occupying positions they should never, ever have even been in at all. And then there are those that um, are in positions that you might, you know, feel like... Uh, they should be there, and they're serving well there, okay? So it can apply differently, but nevertheless, our Heavenly Father is letting us know with this revelation, there's no respecter of him when he gets ready to go forward with whatever he decides to go forward from the heavens into the earth as it pertains to his kingdom, the saints of God in the earth, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, and thank you, Almighty God, for that revelation. All right, so that is going to bring me to the conclusion of this video. God bless you. And I will see you on our next video as we continue to go forward with revelations, uh, messages, and Bible study on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.